man, it's just uncomfortable. Just uncomfortable. Just look at my hands. I, I mean, I can feel my man boobs shaking. <laughs> Which gives me an idea. Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And this is the review of the Ninebot Max. And whilst it is a good scooter and it has a lot of stuff improved over the M365 Pro, today I'm gonna to tell you why you should not buy it. Let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. You have to understand the background and the channel here to, to know like why this is my opinion. If you look at my channel, there's a lot of personal electric vehicles, high performance ones, um, low performance as well, from a $300 or $400 Nextdrive N7 to Ryan's that cost around six or seven, maybe even more thousand dollars. After riding a 010X like this or a 08X like Taju has right here. This scooter is rather disappointingly underpowered and uncomfortable. But, le but let me start with the good things about the Ninebot Max because I gotta tell you there's also good things on the scooter and if you wanted to, co to compare the scooter to the Xiaomi 365 Pro and the Ninebot ES4 there's also a video about it linked here. The build quality is what strikes me on this scooter and I gotta tell you nothing is loose there's no rattling at, at all you can hear it nothing is happening here so the build quality is rather stellar it also folds you know like the Xiaomi but the hinge mechanism here is also way better way more robust and naturally it also locks in place but this uh, you know quality bump and you know structural rigid rigidity bump comes at a cost this scooter weighs 19 kilograms so I believe the range in the M365 Pro and in the and in the Ninebot Max is quite similar actually. Just to show you guys, um, boom. the folding mechanism is really much much improved in the Max. I mean, you can't say anything bad about this, about the folding mechanism. It's really sturdy. Nothing is loose, and yeah, you just carry it around. But if you are not too strong of a person. Oh, the Ninebot Max like isn't really easy to carry because it's big, it's bulky. For a you know small city scooter compared to the Xiaomi M365 Pro. So the range here is not a lot better than on the M365 Pro. It's just 470 watt hours against 550. The math is really simple. There's nothing, uh, nothing more to it. So the range is anywhere between 35, 45 kilometers on the fastest mode. Uh, you know, don't read the stuff that Ninebot tells you that it's a like, 50 mile scooter or 40 mile scooter because they're going at a pace of a... <coughs> this is the range, by the way, uh, from Ginger on wheels. Uh, he had uh, like around 30, 35 ki kilometers and he also did a stellar review on the Ninebot Max, which you should totally, totally check it out. Very in-depth, very good quality content and very also good quality picture. The bigger range is from a friend of mine, Carter Nordium. Uh, who also say, sells upgrade kits to the Ninebot Max and we'll also feature a statement for, from him later on in the video. Okay, so going back to, to the quality, we can take a look at the handlebar right here. Um, you know, here's the Speedo, I can just turn it on, boom. The Speedo also dims if you turn the light on. Um, there's also the battery indicator, there's also like a protective film here. That's why it's not as well visible as uh, it could be. So there's also a bell which we love it i mean it's a great bell it's loud and you can make it really noticeable or just you know subtle the brake lever is also awesome uh looks really well works well and the brake is actually now in the front in my opinion where it should be it's a drum brake works rather well uh ginger on wheels did also some brake tests and acceleration tests on it so this is pretty cool and the motor is uh, in the rear also has the regenerative uh, braking. I like that there is a sound for the cruise control that lets you know that it's on. And I love the bell. It's sort of almost like a musical instrument. <laughs> Going back to the handlebar, 
There's also the accelerator or a throttle, which is appallingly soft. I mean, when you accelerate on it, it's like half a second till it really starts accelerating and then there's a soft start. Super unresponsive. You do something and then it just starts like half a second later and not with the full power. This is probably to conserve energy, but yeah, it's just so, so unresponsive. And sometimes it went to that extent that I'm, you know, I, I stop, I start, I don't really know if if the, the if the motor is on or not because sometimes I just go a bit too not not enough doesn't turn on then I go a little more less I I'll accelerate a bit more and then it turns on and sometimes if I have my foot uh, still kicking I can even wheelie but not purposefully so naturally you can eliminate uh, the problem with the kickstart we just downloading a custom firmware and I and I made a whole entire video about it too which is on the channel. Even with a custom firmware this scooter isn't really like oriented to performance it's rather sleepy. It is torquey which is a great thing but it it doesn't react on the throttle too too quickly. It's I think it's rather meant to be you know simple to use for for everyone. If you don't know any other scooters and if you have never tried anything else, you will find that like amazing. A lot of people started on a Xiaomi M365 or 9bot ES4, 9bot Max. Here you can see some uh, um, experiences that I filmed in Warsaw by people who first tried uh, the 9bot Max. <laughs> Oh, 
Bardzo fajnie. Super jest. To cieszę się. Bardzo fajnie. And now compare this to so good. Now compare this to the 08X, which actually has full tires. Oh my god, this is so comfortable. Suspension works. Oh man, this would be just horrible, horrible on the max. And the point is, once again, if you don't know how, if you don't know the scooter, you would think that the 9 Max is like the best thing ever. But I'm here to show you that it's not and and, and a zero to eight x would be like a world of a difference so after that you i think you can clearly see that the comfort on uh, the scooter is not the best so there is no suspension here no suspension at all it's just the 10 inch uh, tubeless tires but they're inflatable and i have pumped them up in different pressures and from 15 psi which is ridiculously too low to 44 psi which is now which is recommended for my weight around 75 kilograms and these kind of bumps like when you when you go on the road and you change from the road to the pavement to, and then back again to the uh, bicycle route it's terrible Ow. and oh, shaking <laughs> i can't say much bad stuff about the um you know the turning and the ride overall the ride uh, you know geometry and that sort of stuff i mean it turns really well i really like turning with the scooter it feels really you know zippy and, and grippy i mean i like that a lot about the scooter and the geometry is so nice or well thought out that you can even you can even drive oh, ow you can't even drive the scooter without you know touching the the handlebar which i'll show you when i have ugh, better quality asphalt asphalt you can certainly ride without your hand on the steering wheel and you can even turn a bit but yeah don't do that at home kids because it can fall as you can see, we can still get up here quite easily. Not as tired as the cyclist there. And still goes 25. So, as said, this motor is just rather designed for torque, not for top speed. I mean, it's really, really uncomfortable compared to a scooter like the 8X or the 10X or basically any scooter that has suspension. I think I would go to that extent that even a Speedway Mini 4 Pro could potentially be better on the bigger bumps. On the smaller bumps, perhaps not, but on the bigger bumps, I, I think so. I mean, the, the, the range of the scooter is 35 kilometers, but basically after 15 kilometers, I was already really tired of, uh, of riding the scooter. There's a lot of vibrations on the handlebar. Um, I feel on my barefoot shoes, that's why I wear barefoot shoes, that there's a lot of vibration on the deck as well. But going back to the deck, it's rather large. It's way bigger than on the Xiaomi M365 Pro. Um, there's actually a lot of room here. So this is pretty, pretty cool. Not really comfortable to have your legs side by side, but you know, you can ride like that or like that. Um, that just works fine. Uh, the mud guard is good as well. Prevents you from any rain. The light is actually really good because it has a beam, a focus beam that doesn't uh, shine. Let me turn it on doesn't shine on uh, onto pedestrians or oncoming bicycle traffic or whatever traffic and the rear light rather small but still i think more visible than on the m365 pro sadly there is no you know re no reinforcement on the rear mudguard but i think still it's way more robust than on the m365 pro the kickstand also really easy to access like just technically speaking and quality speaking there's nothing wrong on the scooter. So let me just uh, show you this area here. And I'll just do that. <laughs> here is a flap. And the flap is pretty cool because it's water sealed. And here is, uh, normally there would be a charge port, but this scooter was modded for a while. That's why it's not here. And usually you would see a Xiaomi M365 um, connector here. Here it's gone, but normally it's there. And here you have a regular like computer plug let me just show you the only thing you need to charge the scooter up is this just a cable it's that simple but nine bot sells this as a fast charger and i don't know about you but six hours isn't fast 
<laughs> so you would connect the the plug here, boom, and and the rest goes just into the uh, the wall plug. You no know, no additional accessories needed. But yeah, six hours. Even if you charge like for 40 minutes or one one full hour, you'll just retrieve like 10 to 15 percent. That's not a lot. So. This is just a good option if you go to work, if you commute to work and you have to charge at work and just to you know, get the cable with you. But in any way, this is not a fast charger. I have a Gotway MSS, which is 1800 watt hours, three times as big as here, charges at the same speed with a standard charger. Um, so yeah, not, not in any way, any way fast, but convenient, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, the top speed is here around 26, 28 <laughs> kilometers an hour and it's not really possible to go faster on standard firmware and let's just uh, let Carter Nordium explain what is the problem here why can't it go faster all right so the reason why the 9 bot max is such a slow scooter in its stock form factor and the reason why you can't even get higher top speed even utilizing custom firmware is because of uh, two different things hardware wise so both of these are hardware limitations the first component of course being the battery and the second component being the motor the number one thing that i i think contributes to this the most is the motor pretty much you know to put it into simple terms it's just less efficient than most other scooters in its price range and um, you know in similar class like the M365 or the M365 Pro. Believe it or not, the classic M365 with a correct custom firmware will be faster in terms of top speed than the 9Bot Max. And the reason for this is because of the 9Bot Max's motor having a lower KV ratio. So KV ratio is pretty much the relation of RPMs in the motor versus how much voltage that will use to achieve that RPM. So scooters like the M365 and the M365 Pro have a higher KV ratio than the uh, 9 bot Max. And of course, the 9 bot Max has a pretty low KV ratio. Um, and I think there's two reasons why 9 bot did this. Uh, the first being that the Max is obviously a heavier scooter than the M365. So it needs more low end torque uh, to get most heavier riders and just, you know, average riders up to speed, you know, relatively quickly. Having those big 10 inch tires, the bigger wheels, it takes more energy to be able to move them. So having that more low end torque, that higher low end torque is better better for you know the experience of most riders. The second reason that I speculate why 9bot designed the Max this way is due to the different speed limits and regulations around the world. They're looking to distribute to a pretty wide variety of markets. So uh, in most regions and most countries, the legal top speed of most electric vehicles is 15.5 miles per hour or 25 kilometers an hour. So I think they purposely designed the Max so the average consumer wouldn't be able to exceed the top speed uh, with just a simple firmware flash, you know, because they know that custom firmware exists and that most people do it on their scooters. So they made it quite a bit harder and uh, more difficult for people to, I guess, get more speed out of their scooter without, you know, obviously modifying the hardware or anything like that. So the number one solution to this issue, both the battery and the motor limiting uh, the top speed of your scooter, would be to get a 48 volt battery. Now I sell these on my store, Nordbot to X. XYZ, you can pretty much purchase an entire kit. It comes with a brand new 48 volt battery that you can replace the old stock 36 volt battery with and it will give you a top speed of around 53 kilometers an hour or 33 miles per hour. I think Adam will actually be reviewing this pretty soon because one of my customers is located pretty close to him. So once he receives it, then uh, I think Adam will probably do some testing on it and uh, show you guys that. But yeah, the solution to the 9Bot Max's problem is adding more voltage to the battery, so the motor will have more to work with and we'll be able to accelerate to those higher end speeds. The lower the battery level is, then the slower you go. So especially in the first uh, generation of the scooter, I would just go 23 kilometers an hour when I have 20% of the battery. Now with the second generation, this issue is solved and usually you can go around 28 27 kilometers an hour through the whole battery cycle down to like probably 15 or 20 percent but still um, it's painfully slow the xiaomi m365 pro with a mod is way faster than that but the torque is better so who is this scooter designed for and bad people. Bad people, no no it's not bad people definitely it's a scooter that i think personally is very low maintenance so Especially if you're a heavier rider and you need a bit more torque and you want to just have a scooter that goes from A to B, I don't know, two miles, five miles, this will work. I mean, this will be acceptable, low maintenance, looks good, has, you know, app, app support for 
I know, I know what you would use it for, but it has it. And it has just stuff that works, parts are available, it's easy to maintain, and it's available everywhere. And probably one of the reasons why this, these scooters are also that popular is that just they're available everywhere and not everyone knows about scooters like I showed you earlier. If you don't need that torque and you are not such a heavy person and you don't need like the perfect robustness of the Ironbot Max, I think that a N365 Pro should just do the job because of the price. So the M365 Pro with its price with around like $500, $600 is really a great bang for the buck just in terms of the range, the speed you get and all of that good stuff. You can't get a unicycle with the same parameters for the same price. But, and here's the third but, I would just advise to skip a vehicle like this altogether because either way, if you like, I mean, you'll, you'll get hooked on it. You'll be really, really satisfied and then you'll buy something better. Like Jacek was behind the camera, he started on the M365 Pro. Tadjo, what did you start it with? Uh, me, with Zero 08. With Zero 08. So he started already way better than, than Jacek. But the point is, he has now a Zero 08X. Jacek has a Zero 10X. And Ooh. yeah, and I would highly advise you to get a scooter or a electric unicycle for around $1,000, $1,500, because this will give you exceptionally more comfort, exceptionally more range, and yeah, just a, a lot more fun. Because believe me that going 25 on the scooter or 30 is really utterly boring. Uh, probably unless it's, you know, altogether forbidden to <laughs> drive faster than that in your country. You can also mod the scooter. I also made a video on, on it, but it just gives you more torque. It doesn't give you more speed. So in the end, would I get a Nambot Max? And I got to tell you, after riding it for like two, two, three days, going around the city, having a range of 30 kilometers, 35, charging it in between, being bored, <laughs> <laughs> riding with, uh, with my friends and always having the sl slowest pace made me maybe think that it's not really worth buying the 9Bot Max. Get a Galway M10 3 instead, Galway MCM5, Galway Tesla, Emotion V10, 0 10X, 0 8X, 0, 0 9, Speedway 5, Dualtron Thunder, Dualtron Spider, Dualtron 3 or even 2EX Plus Limited get anything <laughs> that is just a bit more expensive, has a bit more range, even if it's a bit maybe more fiddly to have a, you know, Chinese scooter like that, I think it will overall give you a lot more performance, a lot more joy and a lot more flexibility. If you just want to go from point A to B, you want something robust, you're a, maybe a bit heavier, um, I think it's worth maybe to get the Nibot Max. So if you're still here, leave a like on the video subscribe to see more content like this i'll see you man in the next video see you soon